What's up everybody, how you doing? So, as you can see from the thumbnail, I decided to paint over an old sketch. Uh, drew this sketch back in like the beginning of 2015. I don't know, I, I've been getting together a bunch of my sketches to, to put together like a collection of all my sketches in a book. And as I was going through them, I remember, you know, I'd see one here or there and I'd be like, oh, I've always wanted to paint that, I've always wanted to paint that. And I've been promising myself lately that I'm going to get back to doing at least some painting for just fun because everything that I've been doing for the longest time has just been about work in one way or the other. Even when I'm working on my own personal projects, I give myself really tight deadlines and I don't know, I just sort of suck the fun out of it for myself even. I just want to, I just wanted to paint something for fun and going through the sketches, seeing this venom and like I said, I, it, it was one of the ones where I went, I always wanted to paint this. So I took a picture of it with my iPhone, threw it into the old Photoshop, and uh, just figured I'd, uh, I'd record it and get a little bonus content out there for uh, the Patreon, YouTube, and all that good stuff. So I figured that would be a good topic to kind of start talking about today at least. Painting for fun, and is it a waste of time? You know, I'm, I'm really... I'm really hard on myself that like I, I always feel like if I'm doing something it has to be for one of my projects it has to be for something that you know has a, a uh, I don't know a potential bigger payoff in the end you know what I mean and so I don't really allow myself to draw or paint too much for fun it's either oh I'm, I'm drawing to study anatomy or I'm, I'm drawing because I have this art to do for a client or uh, I'm drawing because I have this you know I need to get the, the sketch worked out for a card or whatever. You know, I think that that's good because I think that everybody should have, you know, a hard work ethic and always be trying to finish stuff. But at the same time, it's like if we don't remind ourselves why we got into art and, and you know, just the sheer fun of just drawing something because you just want to draw it, then, man, I think you're going you're gonna to push yourself to a burnout and, you know, kind of lose... I don't know, that spark to just create and, and, you know, even if you push yourself through that, you know, even if you say you burn out, but it's your job, you can't, you know, you got to do the work. Then I, I just think that you run the risk of it not being very inspired looking, you know, your ideas being a little stale and, you know, when, when you're not having fun with what you're doing, it shows through your work. Just like if you don't have confidence with what you're doing, it shows through your work. So, like I said, I just want to... I want to make sure that, you know, I, I, I felt myself pushing myself so hard with everything since I got out of school that I just, I felt myself for the first time ever really just like, I'm like, is this, is this burnout? Is that what this is? You know, and I, uh, it got to the point to where it started to even affect my confidence and then I could see a difference in my work and it, it just stylistically even wasn't quite feeling like my work anymore. And, it, and I think that's something that we all need to do. I think that we all just need to find a way, just like we have to find time to practice anatomy and we have to find time to, you know, practice our fundamentals and, and do all of the boring stuff that helps you become a better artist. Uh, I also think we need to do the stuff that's fun to remind us like, oh yeah, this is why I really, really love to do this because you there's always fun when you're doing art, right? Like when you're working on a piece, uh, even if it's the most difficult client, there's always stuff that's fun, but I think that's a little bit different than sitting down and creating a piece just purely for fun. And, and like, I tried stuff in this that I normally wouldn't do. I didn't care. I didn't care. It wasn't for anything important. If this thing turned out to just be a big steaming pile of crap, I didn't care. And, and it was just fun to draw something just because and not worry about how it turned out. And it, and it, and it put me in a better state of mind. And it actually made me more motivated to get back into working on projects that I've been dragging my feet on. So I think that there's a lot of good to it. One of the things I really wanted to do with this was simplify my my shapes. Like if, if you look at the the sketch, I had uh, a lot of a lot more complex stuff going on in there, and there was some of it that I really liked, and I and I kept a lot of it. But there were some other areas where I'm like, no, I just want this to be this shit, just a basic shape. And, uh, you know, five years ago, 
I didn't really consider things like value hierarchy or anything. So I wasn't really using my values to push DI where I wanted it to be. So even though there is a lot more darks down at the bottom of the sketch, I didn't do it intentionally with the idea of like, oh, if I, if I darken this and then create that gradient up towards the eye, that's where your eye is gonna be drawn. So with this one, I, I started to simplify stuff even more and make you know things a little bit more impressionistic as they get into that darker area. And then, you know, up the textures and the details as I get closer to the top parts. I don't know. You know, I, I love working off black and white drawings because I feel like you're not beholden to any kind of color that way. You know, you can just do whatever you want and, and it's not really wrong because who knows, you know, and, and you could, I could have done this in pink. And if you play around with the environment enough, you could convince people like, yeah, there's, you know, reflected pink light on him. It makes sense. I love using crazy colors. Everybody, everybody I think kind of knows that one of my favorite you know things to do is to try to pick colors that normally would make sense and throw them in there so right from the beginning of this one i knew i wanted to put a lot of green in there and you know the idea of like having it those like kind of red show through the underpainting and whatnot it just made it you know it made sense oh man <laughs> one of the the a really cool thing for me happened um, so I did this piece and I did it while everybody was asleep. And so in the, in the morning, um, I, I, I told my kid, he loves horror, everything horror. He's just obsessed with it. And I don't do a ton of monstery stuff. And so I was like, Oh man, he, five will probably love this. By the way, we call, call my kid five because he's Cecil Porter the fifth. So um, I decided when he was a baby that I'm going to call him five for short. And it just, you know, now Ash does it and everybody else does it. Anyways, so I was like, five, come here, buddy. I, I drew a monster you want to see. And he's like, yeah, let me see it. And he's like, he's so, <laughs> everything he does, he's just like so supportive <laughs> the way he talks. You know, like if you do something, he'll be like, that was really good, dada. <laughs> and and I, I showed him. I showed him the drawing and I was like, oh, maybe you'll, you'll think it's cool because it's a monster, right? And he's like, oh, Dada, I really like that. You did such a good job. It looks just like Venom. And I was like, what? I was like, you know who Venom is? I have no clue how he knows who Venom is. I mean, I talked to him about comics and stuff, but I have never mentioned Venom that I can think of. And uh, I was blown away and I was just like, <laughs> I was so impressed that he knew who Venom was. And then, and then like he seen that I was like super impressed with that. And so like it made him really excited because he was like, oh, you know, daddy, dad is impressed with, with this. And uh, it was just so cool. I was, I was blown away. Uh, that was probably the neatest thing to come out of this was <laughs> just showing it to him. And then him being like, oh, that looks like a really good Venom. <laughs> and I just couldn't believe it. Uh, I, I kind of got to a point where I got out of school where I said like, man, I think I'm done with digital art. I'm only going to use it, you know, for studio work when I have to do concept stuff or whatever. And um, maybe, you know, for, I would use it still for some of my thumbnails, but I even got away from that because I, I found myself put too much work into it because it's just so easy to, you know, increase the size of your thumbnails. I did still like it a lot for color comps, which I don't do very often, but it is you know, such a quick way to do a color comp. Uh, so I, I did still like it for that, but I never thought I'd just sit down and do it. But then since I started doing the Patreon and the Gumroad, you know, it's just such a fast process. Like I, I painted this piece in two hours and it's just such a fast process that I guess I'm back to using it more. And it's fun, man. It's fun because you can just, I don't know, to me, there's, even though there shouldn't be, there's something a little bit more precious about using, you know, I, I paint with oils or gouache mainly, and there's something a little bit more precious about that. I'm a little bit more calculated with what I do. I play things a little bit safer a lot of times because I don't, I don't want to flub the piece. And uh, with digital, you don't have to worry about that. You know, if you don't like something, you could backspace or you could lasso tool that whole section out if you want to repaint a whole section or whatever you want to do but you're not really going to flub the piece and when you're doing something quick you know it's like a two hour painting man even if you do flub the whole piece you know in a couple days you'll be able to find a couple hours where you can jump back in and you know put another couple hours into it right you're not having to 
you know, prep the canvas and, and prime it and do all this other stuff. You just sit down and just start going at it. Oh, see right here, I, I was, <laughs> I remember this, I, I, uh, I stopped working on it and then came back to it. I looked at the eye and I, I, there was some cool stuff going on with, with like the textures above the eye, but I don't know. It was, it was such a different shape than Venom's eye and it still is, but it was so different that I was like, I don't, I don't think I like it now. So I went in here and just knocked out a, I don't know, a whole chunk of it and tried to reshape it. And, it, and I'm happier with the shape, but I, I lost a lot of the cool stuff that I had going on above the whatever the weight area is on the eye. And so I, I find myself being able to get back into the stylistic choices that I like, which are, you know, the, the really high chroma colors using, you know, crazy colors that, that, you know, maybe some people wouldn't think about using it in my head. You know, they're the guys that I look up to like Jim Murray, Basil Gogos, you know, Simon Bisley, Glenn Fabry, like those guys, um, some more so than others, they, they would all use crazy colors and have these color notes throughout their piece that necessarily you wouldn't normally think of doing, you know, especially when you look at like Jim Murray's uh, magic cards or um, the Dota comic that he put out uh, or, you know, like Simon Bisley stuff in, in Slain or in Lobo. Um, you know, Glenn Fabry's Preacher covers, I think everybody's pretty, you know, familiar with. You, you can see those color notes and, you know, Basil, I think Basil had like the, the most impressive command of color um, to my eye that when I looked at it, I was like, oh man, if I could control color like that, that's the, that's so awesome. And so I, I, I kind of draw from all those guys and, and just sort of, I don't know, you know, it's a, it's an ongoing thing, right? Like, every time I get a little bit better at color, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. And, it, and I, I reckon that's how it's going to be for forever, you know, until I'm dead. Um, you know, same, same thing with anatomy, composition, all that stuff. It, I'm always just kind of like, oh, I, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. I'm nowhere near where I want to be. When I'm doing digital, you can play around with that stuff a lot more and, and, it, and it's a little bit more freeing. So I, I don't know. I think I'm going to do a, a fair amount of digital when it comes to doing like the Patreon and stuff, just because I can knock out a cool piece, you know, with every piece I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm putting up a tutorial, I'm putting up a time lapse, you know, that's like this where I'm just talking to you guys, and then I'm doing, you know, something for the YouTube, and then I'm time lapsing that more down for the Instagram. So I'm always gonna, I'm gonna put up pretty much everything that I do, whether it's an oil painting or a drawing or or whatever. Um, just to keep a steady flow of work out there and uh, different subject matter to, to try to keep it, you know, not so monotonous. I'm definitely going to do more digital work than I, than I thought I was going to do, you know. But that's why I think it's important to do this kind of stuff, man, because you need to just have fun when you can. I know, like, sometimes people's schedules get super busy and, uh, you know, it's... It's just the life of an artist, right? It's feast or famine. You're either you have more work than you can handle, or you're you're wishing you had work. When you have downtime, man, uh, try to do stuff that's fun. Like you you'll see, like if it just feels good, you know. And, and it's nice to have those little reminders of like how cool it feels just to draw for the heck of it, you know. Every time things get slow, I always think like you know what else would I do, or you know sometimes just talking to people I think like what else would I do if I wasn't an artist right and man I, I just I honestly can't picture anything else at all like it, it, everything just seems like absolute misery to me if it's not art so I think I'm really lucky in the fact that you know I get to do art for a living uh, I make decent money I can support my family you know I I don't know I, I just I'm really 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 happy that I get to do it but because it is a job, sometimes you just feel like, Bleh, you know, and, and it's nice, you know, doing a piece like this was like, well, dude, I got to do something cool. This was awesome. And, uh, you know, I'll, I won't do anything with this piece. I'll, I'll put it up on my Patreon for people to download if they want to or something. And, you know, it'll be an Instagram post, but I'm not, I'm not going to do anything with it. It was just for fun. And that was nice, man. It was nice to not be like, oh, I have to do this piece for this client or this piece has to be done this way. Or it's just, 
it was whatever I wanted it to be. Uh, in, in hindsight, looking at this thing, I kind of wish I would have put like a, a hand or something in there. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a guy who likes to do a lot of floating heads. I don't typically do that. And I keep looking at this thing and I'm like, oh man, even if, you know, you just had part of the hand in there or something, it, it would have filled that space nicer and you could have added more expressiveness by using, you know, the gesture of the hand or whatever. But overall, it was a lot of fun. It was neat. And, and man, I, I, I rarely draw comic book stuff anymore. You know, I mean, I'm working on my comic, but it's not like superhero comics, right? It was kind of cool to just sit and draw like, you know, a character that, that I grew up really liking. I remember when I was a kid, the first like really big story I got into with Venom was called Lethal, Lethal Protector. And uh, I, I don't know, for me, I guess that's just sort of the iteration of Venom that I like the most. You know, it, it, now as an adult, like I've gone back and I've looked at all Todd McFarlane stuff and... and you know, seeing the earliest versions of Venom and things, and, and they were cool, but that Lethal Protector storyline, man, and and even in Maximum Carnage, like, those those versions of Venom, I think, are the ones that, just because I was a kid, and, and those are the ones that really kind of stick out in my head. So that's, uh, that's kind of what I was trying to draw here, was sort of my version of those Venoms. Um, I know it's still got a lot of craziness in there that they don't put into the comic I, I can't help that it's just how I it's just how I draw I, I, I love detail and texture and all that crap so one thing I've been doing a lot lately is really trying to focus on pulling back my detail uh, you know the part of that is when I try to simplify the lines you know not having so much going on around the outside but also on the interior I used to do my pieces before school before I was aware you know of, of the proper way to do stuff, I would have the same amount of detail from top to bottom because I just love doing detail. And, you know, in school I was made aware of it. Uh, if you do that, then the eye doesn't really have a resting place and it's darting all around and it doesn't really know what story you're trying to tell, what the focus is. So I've been trying to drive that down and, and really knock that back. And, uh, you know, with this it was more of just like a a floating head like I said so there wasn't a ton of areas that I wanted to do that in but I did do it around you know the traps the neck muscles the the collarbone down into the chest as it just kind of blends into the background and all that stuff and and I think it helped um, another thing you're gonna see me do in a second is I create a color layer and fill it with black and then I just flip it on and off to see if my forms are reading correct uh, color can kind of confuse the eye sometimes and you might think a forms reading well and it's not and so once I did that, I seen a couple of areas that I needed to go in and, and play around with the values to get them to read the way that I wanted them to read. All right, guys, that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, consider checking it out on my Patreon and subscribing. Uh, I have all these kind of videos up on the $1 tier of my Patreon, along with a bunch of downloadable art. And if you're interested in seeing how I do this, the, my, like my actual process, more of tutorial style, then at the $5 level, I have long, um, almost real-time videos of a lot of my art so that you can watch along and see exactly what I'm doing and how I do it. And I walk you through the process and that will cover everything from digital art to pencil drawings to uh, oil painting, gouache painting, etc. Whatever, whatever I'm doing. Um, so check it out and uh, I hope to see you guys again. Thanks a lot.